Harry pulled out his cloak from wherever I said he'd put it earlier, and under its obfuscating powers dashed to catch up with Zabini, like an invisible shadow on an overcast day. Zabini stepped into the Slytherin cabin and tried to shut the sliding door behind him, but Harry slipped his foot in to keep it from closing. B bloody door won't close properly. <coughs> it's as if some invisible person has their foot caught in it. Well, close it harder, Zabini. Throw your weight into it. <coughs> Draco suggested. <coughs> ow, ow, ow! Ah, oh, no good. Now the door's just crying in pain. Harry pushed the door open, throwing Zabini into Goyle's lap, and in the ensuing disorder, dashed up into the luggage rack. Hey, Shay, it felt like an invisible person or someone under an invisibility cloak pushing me over. The occupants of the Slytherin cabin righted themselves and resumed feigning dignity as only privileged teenagers can. Crab read his comic book, and Draco laid his head in Pansy Parkinson's lap. Harry looked down through the luggage rack, and what he saw was saddening and shocking. They killed Ultimate Spider-Man! That was like one of the only three comics I collect these days, man. Why, Bendis, why? Anyway, Draco said... So, what did Professor Tusker Slug want? You know how he is. Social climbing and that. Well, I suppose my invitation just got lost in the owl post. You probably weren't invited because you're la 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 I can't hear you, I'm popular! Good, that's settled. Who cares what some fat walrus thinks anyway? I probably won't even be at Hogwarts next year. What? Pansy Parkinson broke in. But, Draco baby, I was waiting for seventh year. Mother always told me to wait for seventh year. Seventh year, Draco! Relax. Hogwarts and rules and stuff probably won't matter soon. I'm moving on to bigger things. What bigger things? Oh, you know, getting a job with the big man. A little of the Uggle May Illing K. Something that rhymes with blood traitor schmorcher. My, but this mark on my left arm itches sometimes. I have a mark on my arm, Draco. Pansy said, rolling up her sleeve. It says, Mrs. Pansy Malfoy. <laughs> I used a hot poker instead of a razor so it would last longer. That's nice. So, Mother wants me to finish my education, but I really don't see grades mattering when he takes over. It'll all be about who serves him best and who has the right parents. I've got a little something going on in a place with a guy. Here Malfoy looked up into Harry's general direction. With the stuff. Harry was startled. Did Malfoy know he was there? How could he have seen through Harry's ninja-like stealthfulness and sneak? Pansy shuddered beneath Draco, looking down at him as if he was a new showerhead with three different pulse settings. I say, is that pocket change falling out of that empty space in the luggage rack? Yes, and some keys. If found, please return to Harry Potter. Oh, well, it's probably nothing. Well, there's Hogwarts. We'd better head out. Hold my hand, Draco baby. I'll die if I don't feel your touch. You go on ahead. I have something suspicious and secret to look at in my trunk first. With a whimper of subservient disappointment, Pansy left with the other Slytherins. Draco opened his trunk and leaned in, blocking the contents from Harry's view with his body. Freeze the Astagulus! He shouted, whipping his wand around in Harry's direction. Harry slowly fell from the rack onto the floor, scrunched and balled up like a turtle. I thought that might be you, Potter. Because, well, really, come on. There's nothing you can do to stop me, because nobody, nobody will think to ask me to see my left arm. <laughs> now, just one more thing. Here he took out a spellow sharpie and drew an L on Harry's forehead over his lightning scar. And to sign it with a stamp! Like hell's own notary public, Draco stomped on Harry's nose, breaking it, sending blood shooting down Harry's face. And now, even though my plans can only benefit from the stealth this cloak would give me, I'm going to drape it over you so that nobody will find you until this train gets back to London. Maybe. <laughs> He left Harry there, bleeding, immobilized, and invisible. And so ends Chapter 7. All 
characters and source material are copyright 2005 J.K. Rowling. Harry Potter characters, names, and related indicia are trademarks of and copyright Warner Brothers. Now, Harry Potter, the best of all, the boy who lived the chosen one, they say. Zabini chuckled. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Exactly as it was. <laughs> All right, that was wonderful. Do it again. <laughs>